these are just fun coasters if, if you like German architecture or you like German history. There's just this these series of coasters. Most of them are done in black and white. Some of them are sepia toned. Uh, some of them are marked with the cities. This one was uh, Ding Dinkles Dinkles Buell. I think I made that up. Well, if you got a dollar, well, just lousy down. Know that I got rhythm that could suit your budget found. Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome back. If this is your first time to the channel, well, welcome to you too. Trusty Huckster Mercantile is a vintage reseller with a presence on Etsy and just starting to have a little presence on eBay. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and uh, Facebook at TH Mercantile, short for Trusty Huckster Mercantile. I've been a little bit uh, negligent, falling a little bit behind in posting some new content. Quite a few things going on uh, personally as well as business-wise. I just moved in this weekend into a new vintage mall, uh, which I'm really excited about. I tried for six months at an antique uh, mall in a showcase. Unfortunately, a couple of those months were over, over the COVID shutdown, but even before that, it was not earning itself out. So I learned some lessons, kind of saw how things worked, found a different location that's a little bit closer to home, which will make a lot of difference, and super excited to be moving into uh, the vintage marketplace in North Aurora, Illinois, which is uh, local for me. But because of that, prepping, pricing, everything, getting the, they're all electronics, getting all the tags done, I really haven't had a chance even to post all the videos that I wanted to post for the road trip that I took to Kentucky. So hopefully some more videos will be popping up on that. Until then, uh, check out Fat Bird Finds, uh, George at the Antique Nomad, Jeffrey Real Nifty Vintage, and Misty at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter because we were all uh, there together. We were all posting, uh, recording videos and posting our content. So it's spreading out over the next couple of weeks and hopefully I'll get that one done uh, within the next week or so. But until then, I'm also trying to get items posted uh, either on Etsy or going into my new vintage spot. And what I discovered that the mall space that I have is much larger than the showcase and it just completely absorbed everything that I moved into it. And so I need to start pulling things out of Etsy and really get some of the items that I picked up from some of my hauls, get them priced and into that booth or onto the shop. So I've already missed in a couple of the haul videos that I've been trying to do from the Kentucky trip. I don't have anything to show because I've already either sold it or it's listed or it's already at the at the vintage mall. So this one, I decided to do one uh, for on a topic that as odd as it may seem, if you're new to my channel, inadvertently, I have just be I have basically developed this uh, reputation for being obsessed by coasters. Now, I still question whether it's an obsession. I personally just feel maybe I'm a tidy person, but I grew up with coasters. I always had coasters all around my house, even in my dorm, in my first apartment in college. Uh, every place that I've been, I've, I've just had to have coasters because that's just the way I was raised and I thought that was normal. I thought everyone did that. Maybe I have more coasters than a normal person should have, but when I started my vintage business, coasters just fall into the category of something that I really like them. So I like researching and knowing the different styles that are out there, but they're also really easy to ship. So when I started picking up vintage items to resell, they were, were kind of a natural item for me to start carrying. So then when I started doing my live sales on YouTube, every sale I had coasters. It wasn't on purpose. It wasn't a grand plan. It was just in some cases I'm picking between 30 and 60 items to sell in a sale. I just had a bunch available and some people started catching on and realizing that I had a problem. But problem or not, Okay, maybe I do have a problem because what I'm about to show you is a haul video dedicated just to coasters and I'm afraid it's going to be really long. So we're just going to do the best we can. All of these coasters will either go up onto eBay or they may end up in my vintage uh, mall. Uh, so if you see anything that you like and you're interested, hey, if you're going to buy a coaster, you might as well buy it for someone who's obsessed with coasters. I just drop me a comment and or send me a message and let me know what you're interested in and I'm more than happy to sell you something outside of the traditional, you know, Etsy or whatever. And because if they go to the and if they go to my vintage uh, space, I they may sell and I won't be able to get them back. So in, enjoy the video for what it is and you know, maybe you'll fall in love with coasters like me because how can you not fall in co love with coasters when they've got such great graphics? So we're going to start I'm gonna start with the pile that I just picked up first. 
This is a, a box lot that I picked up from an auction. It was actually the first auction that was taking place from one of my favorite auction houses, uh, Matthew Bullock in Ottawa, Illinois. They're about an hour from me. Uh, so I really have only ever done their online auctions anyway, but they'd pretty much stopped them because they had no way to, you know, for you to pick things up. You know, Illinois was pretty much shut down during the pandemic. So this was the first auction that they started up once things kind of started reopening. And they have a really very responsible plan of how to, you know, you schedule your pickups. So there's no more than a couple of people in the building at any given time. So you're social distancing, you've got your masks. It's just, it's very well run. So this was the first sale after the pandemic. They happen to have a box lot of coasters. Now that's not how they pitched it. They pitched it as a box lot of small plates. And there were a handful of just random loose plates that were in there that I've already, a couple of them I've already sold off in my uh, live sale and a couple went into my booth over the weekend. Um, but the reason I really wanted this was because it was primarily a box of coasters. And I got it for a ridiculously low price because what other person in their right mind is going to buy over a dozen porcelain coasters? But I did. So I'm going to start with the, the stack that I happen to pick up first. This actually happens to be a stack that is not marked. Uh, so these are just porcelain coasters with some great designs on them. They just are, they're unmarked porcelain. So this one is, almost all of these are German or at least European. Uh, so this one is, uh, uh, looks like Rottenberg. So there's like some great architecture there. I've got this, you know, more, probably more of a contemporary souvenir piece uh, with the double-headed eagle from uh, highlighting Vienna, Austria. And Vienna is one of my favorite places. I spent Christmas and New Year's with my daughter there. Um, absolutely loved it. This one is an anniversary edition, 150 years of Berlin. Again, just some great graphics that don't really need to match decor. They're coasters. You know, yes, you can buy coasters, and trust me, I have coasters that'll match decor. But these are just fun coasters. If, if you like German architecture or you like German history, there's just this these series of coasters. Most of them are done in black and white. Some of them are sepia toned. Uh, some of them are marked with the cities. This one was uh, Dink. Dinkles, Dinkles Buell. I think I made that up, but it's written in Old English and like that Old English lettering, so I'm not 100% sure what it says. And uh, the Huckster Helper is not here who speaks German to tell me if that's a town, if that's a region, a building, I don't know. But it's just, it's cool architecture, whatever it is. Uh, Neuschwanstein, which happens to be a castle I visited, uh, that's uh, King Ludwig's. It's what Disneyland's. Uh, uh, fairy tale castle was based on. Uh, that's in Bavaria, Germany. I traveled to, uh, visited there when my daughter was littler, littler, smaller, younger, uh, probably when she was about 12. We did a trip to uh, Munich and uh, saw Neuschwanstein. Uh, Frankfurt, also on that same trip, I think I, we traveled through Frankfurt. Be perfectly honest, it didn't look like that. Everything I saw was all concrete and glass. It was not attractive. Sorry, Frankfurters. Uh, then this one's Luxembourg. So you've just got this like built-in history lesson with some great illustrations and architecture. I really like architecture. How can you not like these coasters? <laughs> so those all happen to be unmarked, but some of them are marked and you know, some of them can start getting some age. Like this one is Cologne uh, with the German spelling of it. And this one was actually produced by Kleber in West Germany. So you've got some vintage pieces uh, built into this. Uh, this one is uh, the Hofbrau House in Munich. Uh, so this one I wouldn't have thought was uh, vintage, but it too was manufactured in West Germany. So you've got, you know, vintage pieces coming out. Some of them are just simple souvenir pieces. You know, this one is a stamped piece from Bavaria, uh, Germany of Schloss Lind Lindhof. This, if you visit Neuschwanstein, I believe Lindhof is the palace of his parents. Uh, so you can see that at the base of the mountain is where Lindhoff is. This one, it may not necessarily be a coaster because the, the recessed area is relatively small. So you'd have to be a relatively small cup. But unlike most decorative plates, when they're designed this way, they would have holes to hang them or some way to hang them. And this one doesn't. So I count this as a coaster, but it's really more of a, probably more of a souvenir plate. Uh, this one I really liked also uh, marked from Germany, but it's got an interesting edge. 
And I have almost 20 of this style of coaster or of the German architecture coasters in my possession that I use on a daily basis. I don't have any that have that kind of trim. So this one might end up in my collection, but most likely not because, because it's unique, it won't stack nicely along with the others. So, but this one is also marked, um, yeah, another German word that I'm sure my daughter would be able to pronounce for me, but I cannot. And then this one is um, Royal Porcelain. This is KPM. So you get some major European porcelain houses making these. And again, they may be nothing more than a souvenir piece, but it's a lightweight piece of sou uh, souvenir, light piece, lightweight piece of porcelain. KPM Porcelain is one of the best manufacturers of porcelain in Europe. This one may not have a huge amount of age. I don't know all the KPM back, back stamps, but it's Oberammergau. And they are noted for the passion play every 10 years. They should be doing one. They were supposed to be doing one in 2020. And I'm not sure if it actually took place because of COVID. But I've also visited Omarabergau. Uh, and they are also, when they don't do the passion play, they carve wood. So, you know, just again, it's a, it's a cute coaster with a nice design to it. Simple enough. Uh, but I did drift a little outside of Germany when I got this box lot. There was a Dutch uh, Delft piece that... Again, relatively modern. This mark is on a lot of uh, contemporary pieces that doesn't make it any less quality, just doesn't necessarily fall into vintage. So this one I won't be able to put onto Etsy, but I can sell this in my live sale or I can put this in my vintage, the vintage market booth because there aren't rules about it needs to be vintage, but it needs to look vintage. And this looks pretty dang vintage. This is the first one I've ever had that was marked for Iceland. I don't find the image all that attractive you know necessarily but it's the blue and white it looks you know you got kind of got the norse look going to it so you know this might be one of those that maybe this does match your decor uh if you're into i don't know what do the iceland have they don't have fjords they must have something like them though uh because it looks like they're waterways around mountains so whatever they call those in iceland you've got an icelandic piece which again is probably not super old uh, it's probably more of a it's, a, it's a souvenir piece, but it's a nice looking souvenir piece. Um, <laughs> definitely, again, another set, which might have some age to it, but it's not what most people would consider vintage. But it's a set of these like stone cast coasters. And if you know what War Memorial this is, I would love to know. Because that bridge in the background, I, there should I should know what this is. Those flags, I believe we determined like the red one is the marine flag. Um, so there's, this is a service war memorial, but I don't recognize it. And Google Lens didn't recognize it either. So if you happen to know, I would love to know what war that is. Again, that one though is nice because it's a set of four. So it's not necessarily the type of coasters that I typically carry. Uh, and I really, they might have some age to them, but I'm, I question whether they'd even hit the era of Etsy, um, everything. I'm not sure they're 20 years old. Maybe they are. And if I could figure out what war that is, I might be able to research them a little bit better because they're fully cork backed. So they don't have anything, there's nothing I can use to research it. So kind of cool. Not something I would have gone out of my way to buy, absolutely, admittedly, but because it was in a box lot and I got this entire box along with those other plates. And what I sold the other plates for has already paid for the entire box. So anything that I do with these coasters, whether I keep them for my permanent collection or I start selling them, I am totally in the clear profit wise. And so I can just kind of have fun and try and cover the world with coasters. So as I mentioned, one of the things that I realize I'm falling behind on is posting my videos from my trip to Kentucky. Uh, so I do hope to get those videos posted and talk a little bit more detail what I found, but they're not really going to have any serious uh, hauls that go along with them. I already did a couple of hauls. I actually did two live hauls, did my very first live hauls from the hotel while I was, while I was in Kentucky because I knew I was getting so much that the haul videos were going to take forever. And I just decided to do a couple of them live. I did a third one live, but that one was the live haul from what I had picked up from George, uh, the Antique Nomad. And that one was, I had him live on my channel and talked to him a little bit about the history of each of the items. So that was a little bit different. So anyway, if you go into my channel, you'll find a little bit more of the hauls. But one of the things that I had picked up on that trip 
was we went to Layman's, which was uh, Laura from Fatbird Finds. It's her mother's shop. Uh, so it's in Paducah. And I had a blast. I found all kinds of great stuff uh, at Layman's. I didn't film inside. That was during the time where I wasn't feeling comfortable really videotaping the shop with me videos. I got a little bit more confident and did some more as I went along. But that one, I didn't happen to have any video from inside. But I found some great stuff. And one of them was coasters. So this one was fun to get because it's a set that I've never had before. I thought they were Pimpernel, but they're not. They're, they're Cloverleaf, which is a, a name that I'm not familiar with, but they've got the Pimpernel style. So they're very, very thick. You know, they've got the cork backing. They are kind of the, the laminate-y type plastic on the top. Um, they, I think these would, these would hold up very well. So these are very nice, and I liked the set as, as its own, but you can see the box is pretty large because not only were these in the box, they also had placemats. Now, I eat more than would fit on this placemat. So I think these might be a little bit more along the lines of like cocktail mats or something like party mats where you're putting down. I don't know if you could really, it is cork backed, but I don't think you'd want to put anything hot. Like I don't think you'd want to use this as a hot pad. Um, so I mean, they are, they are calling them placemats. So they are placemats, they're just small placemats. So like to me, this would be like a salad would fit onto this, but it's nice that they're full set. So there's four individual images and of course the coasters with the matching images. So that was a really cool uh, piece to pick up. Even made even cooler because I picked it up at Layman's, somebody, you know, through Fatbird Finds. I was super happy to be able to support them. Uh, it was a lot of fun being there. Uh, her mom was so friendly and accommodating and just, just very very Southern hospitality. And it was fun to be able to pick some stuff up. So I got coasters from Fat Bird Finds Mama. So I'm really happy to have those. Also, actually it was, actually it was the same day that we visited uh, Layman's. We went uh, also and did a trip to the shed. I tried to do some videos. It was hard because there were a lot of people there. I was wearing my mask. But I ended up hitting pay dirt on one booth that just really spoke to me and had a lot of things that fell into my interest. And it was a booth called, oh, I thought it said, well, it's a booth that has a little B logo on it, booth 3124. So if you're going to the shed in Paducah, I encourage you to go to something that's something to do with a bumblebee. Um, but I ended up finding two sets of coasters there. Admittedly, I'm not sure this is a coaster. It's flat, so it could be a coaster, but it actually seems to have a pour spout. And I don't know why a coaster would have a pour spout. So I have a feeling it is not a coaster. There's a little bit of kind of a, like a uh, waffly, not waffle, but like it's, there's grooves in this. So in the spiral, it, it's raised and lowered. So there's troughs and peaks. And so it's not enough to be a reamer, like, so it's not something you would juice and then pour off, but it's definitely seems to be something that maybe you cut a lemon onto it or cut something that then the juices would be able to be poured off, but it's really small. It could be a spoon rest that, that maybe this is for where the spoon, the actual art, like the, the arm of the spoon would be laid. I don't know, but to be perfectly honest, it was a dollar. I love pottery. It is signed, sort of. Um, I mean, it is signed, but it's not a sign that I'm necessarily going to be able to find. It's just... I think that is a studio pottery signature. I think if you went to a pottery class, I don't think that's how they're going to teach you how to sign your piece. You're going to get a little little scrapey piece and you're going to etch your name into the back and no one will ever be able to read it. So this, I do think, is a studio piece. It's just, I don't even, I can't even tell what those initials are. So I don't, I haven't been able to find it. I don't think it really matters. This is something I think could look great in my vintage, uh, the vintage market because it, it's not, it doesn't have to be vintage, but I have a whole selection of Beaver Creek pottery. This will look great alongside with it. If I put a low enough price on it, I've only about paid a dollar. You know, if I put this in there for five bucks, like a typical coaster, I think it'll sell because it's just a nice piece and people can use it forever they want. They can use it as a coaster, they can use it as a spoon rest, they can use it to do whatever they wish because they will own it, you can too. Uh, but anyway, so that was from the shed in Paducah. 
And then this is clearly a set of coasters. And this one is nice. I'm assuming it's a full set. Um, the stand does go quite a bit higher and there's only four coasters in it. So it could have initially had six very reasonably, but I have no problem selling this as a complete set of four coasters. If it had five or if it had three, then I'd have an issue with it. It's entirely possible that it once upon a time had six. Two of them got damaged or broken. So what's left, because these are all in perfect condition, what's left are four individual that fit into this really nice caddy. Uh, from when I looked at it before, I do not believe the caddy itself is marked, but it does have some discoloration. So I think it's silver plate. You know, if there's a little bit of tarnish going on to it, I'm gonna have to try and clean it up a little bit because maybe it says something under the rim, but I can't see that because it's, you know, with the angle and the fact that it's, it's tarnished. Um, but I only paid $5 for this that I'm not gonna be able to make a huge amount of money on this, but I think this is something I could probably double my money, sell this for about 10, maybe even 12, 15 bucks at the vintage store. I don't think clear glass with a silver caddy is necessarily in everyone's decor, but you can't go wrong with clear glass. You know, there it's gonna match anything you've got. And there's a really pretty uh, pattern in it. They're etched, it's just press, it's um, it's not etched, it's press, pressed glass. Break the tape so you can see it. Um, it's just molded, but it's got this really pretty starburst design going through the middle. Oh, and it does say something on the side of the of the of the glass, and it says France. Damn. So okay, so I've got French coasters, so maybe I can get fifteen bucks. Anyway, very cool, very inexpensive. And just something that I thought was, you know, it was fun to be able to pick stuff up while I was on this trip. Um, it's, it, they were coasters, so I really, would, could, really couldn't say no. So at the beginning of this haul video, I talked about the fact that that box lot of coasters and small plates came from my favorite auction house, Matthew Bullock Auctioneers in Ottawa. One of the things I really like about that auction house is it's kind of split into two parts. And I overheard a conversation. I think it's maybe a husband and wife or relatives or something. One owns the auction side of the business and the other owns the retail side of the business. Now, I don't know if things that don't sell in the auction, like do they cross over into the retail? I've never quite figured that part out. Doesn't really matter. It works like a traditional consignment shop or a traditional um, tag shop where they put all the items for sale. It's not an auction. They tag them. But then the longer they stay on the floor, the bigger a discount you can get. So if it's on the floor for 30 days, uh, the price drops by 25%. If it's on the floor for 60 days, it drops by uh, 50%. So I always take a look and I found all kinds of stuff the day that I picked up the items from that auction when I got that box lot. And I actually came across another coaster. And so I had to pick it up. This one is another Delft coaster, but this is actually actual Delft, uh, vintage Delft. It's a Bach, B-O-C-H, Delft. Says that right on the back. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos over time, when I first started doing videos, behind me was a very large blue and white charger. That was also a Bach Delft charger, and I ended up selling it. Um, but I love the Bach look. I love the Bach name. And I've sold a couple of the smaller ones as well. This happened to be a piece that was on the floor for $4, but had been on there for more than 60 days. So I got it for $2. So I definitely wanted to pick that up and was happy to do so. And again, highly recommend if you're ever in, uh, they're uh, kind of, I don't think you would still consider them a suburb of Chicago, but they're still in Northern Illinois, uh, probably about an hour and a half outside of the city. Uh, anyway, if you're ever in uh, Ottawa, Matthew Bullock, highly recommend. And this was another coaster I picked from them. And then completely coincidentally, I found another one. So this one, I was helping, helping a friend uh, close out a, 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 a her mom's estate. Her mom was downsizing, she's not passed away, but her mom was downsizing to a smaller assisted living facility and just had, you know, a life's work, time's worth of stuff. And so I was helping her kind of price out some of the older pieces, the vintage pieces, the, the antique, some beautiful furniture that I know nothing about. So I, I really couldn't help her there. But a lot of the pieces I went through, priced everything, showed her selling prices in Etsy and, and eBay and from Worth Point so that she really had a, I, she was going to trust me anyway, but I wanted to 
prove to her that my trust was worthy. And when this piece came up, I'm like, okay, look, I'm going to buy this from you for the exact same price I just paid at the, at the auction house. And she's like, works for me. So this was just another Bach Delft piece. And to be honest, I like the imagery of this one a little bit better. They're both vintage Bach, but this one is a little bit more naive looking. Uh, where this one, I'm a, I'm a sucker for architecture. So you put a building on anything and I'm going to be intrigued by it. So this one I just thought was a really attractive piece. So it's another piece of vintage Bach that most likely these might end up going onto my Etsy shop because they're, that's where I've sold my other ones. And there is a market for them because it's a labeled Delft name. So when people are, are Googling or they don't Google on Etsy, when they're searching on Etsy, it's something they can land on. And it, I, again, they're still inexpensive pieces. They're, they're, they're coasters. You're never going to get a lot of money from them. So they, they'll sell, they don't sell for a lot of money, but they'll sell more than the two bucks that I paid for it. And then while I was also helping her mom, uh, helping do the rest of the collection, these popped up, which I just thought were hilarious. Uh, it's cocktail time and it's a cock. It is a rooster, cock and do, however you want to use the word cock. Um, did I just get demonetized? Anyway, it is a set of six. I don't think they were marked in any way. They say made in USA. That one also has a big crack on it. So, you know, we'll see if the rest of them are damaged. Um, but this was just another fun, inexpensive piece I could pick up that was the, she was happy to lessen the load. Um, it happened to be the same person if you, have, if you caught my last live sale. Uh, it's the same estate that had all of the, the vintage glass Christmas ornaments. This was an amazing estate. I was there for nine hours and I didn't even put a dent into what she needed to get priced. I, she'd made a pile for me, so I finished the pile, but there were piles of boxes she didn't even open yet for me to look at. So you do what you, you, do what you can, you know, doing it for a friend. Uh, but I was able to pick up some things and in a very honest way, give fair prices. And then she knew that I was probably going to go resell them. Uh, but like in the case of the vintage uh, Christmas ornaments that we did is kind of a profit share where I said, well, I'll sell them because I don't really know what is fair to give you. And so what I'm going to pay her is based on what they sold for. And gratefully, all of them sold. So it was uh, it, it was a, it was a very interesting state. And I learned a lot. That was actually the main reason I did it and the reason I was there for so long. Because her mom was involved in so many different collecting areas. Things that I've never even seen before. I was Googling to just learn. And so I just learned so much. And that's, to me, that's the joy of vintage and the joy of the reselling business. Anybody can go into a Goodwill or a garage sale, pick something up for a dollar, turn around and sell it for $5. Like, oh, hey, I made five times my money. Yay. I want to know what they are. Like, I'm going to try and figure out who made these. Does it change the price that I'll get for them? No, not necessarily. Sometimes it would. But I just, I kind of want to know. Because if this company made something that looks this cool, what else did they make? And is that a company I want to start looking out for? Is that a company I want to put as a, a saved search on Google or on Etsy or on eBay so when new things get listed, I can find them? Uh, you never know. So loved the research, loved picking up. It's cocktail time. If you watch some of my other videos, you've known uh, another location that I like to go to a lot and I've done some haul videos from locally is a place called Thrift and dollar. It is in Aurora. I live in North Aurora, um, so it's very close to me. The towns about each other. And it is a pretty much a traditional thrift store. It's just an independent one. It's not a Goodwill. It's not a Salvation Army. It's not tied to anything. Admittedly, their prices can kind of run the gamut. They have things, they have a collector's pricing where items that they feel are specialty enough, they will make, uh, they put a white price tag on them and they tend to be a little bit higher priced. Not obscenely high, but you know, you're gonna be looking the six, 10, $15 range. And then those color, the white labels never go on sale. Every place else gets a regular colored label and then each day a different color or combination of colors goes on sale. So I always love going there when the different colors are on sale and those items tend to get priced extremely well and then when they're half price, it's amazingly well so that I can pick some things up and be able to offer them for resale, either in a live sale or yeah, again, one of my shops. So I actually had a handful of things and this actually covers a couple different um, visits to there because I try and go there about once a week just to see what rotates in. But this was, I thought was a fun one. I had picked these up for my Christmas in July sale on my YouTube channel. 
uh, the live sale, but unfortunately I had so many Christmas items, some things just had to get pushed to the side. This was one of them. But I thought it'd be fun to show here because it is a coaster making kit. So you've got the wood sheets that you pop out and then you color and then you make the little cradle that goes with it. And it's just, you know, I don't know if did it have a date on it. Yeah, 1986. Yeah, I'd say that's the 80s. Old new stock. It's completely sealed up. Uh, it's got a barcode on it. Uh, made in the USA. Copyright 86, True to Nature Incorporated. So I don't I don't know like if this was a brand somewhere. Oh wait, there's a tag on it. Frank's. It was from Frank's, uh, which I I vaguely remember. Um, I don't think they exist anymore, or at least they don't around here. So anyway, this was kind of a fun like a coaster kit. I thought it was kind of a fun one to have. I also had uh, from the same location. I picked these up, and these are again they have the white label. So these are the collector labels. They were 90 cents, so sometimes I'm not 100% how their pricing works. But what I thought was interesting about these is they're, you know, they're fine. Thought they were probably like a 90s, you know, the gold, the filigree. That I, that could fit some people's decor, or just be simple enough. And there, there's a pair of them, they're 90 cents, so hey, that's fine. They actually signed Georges Briard, which I didn't know he made porcelain, let alone coasters. Now he did a lot of party material. So I've got gold accented clear glass, like a, I've got a chip and dip set. I've got, um, I've had plates uh, that I've sold from him and they definitely have a gold filigree look, but usually it's gold filigree on glass. So I didn't even know he did porcelain. So he does, he did porcelain. And so there's a pair of Georges Briard that for the two of them, I've got under two, under two bucks. It's not gonna be, again, a huge moneymaker, but it is a signed name that these will probably end up on Etsy simply because people know Georges Briard that they might stumble across them and be like, oh, hey, you know what? For an inexpensive additional purchase, this is kind of a fun item to have. And if you've got nosy guests that are at your party, they're gonna pick up your coasters, look around like, ooh, hey, you got Georges Briard. And then the last coaster, not really a coaster, could be a coaster, more of a hot plate but I thought it was a fun hot plate. This one is, it can, it is designed to also be able to be hung, um, but it's made out of, out of individual wine corks and it's in a nice frame. Again, don't think it's particularly old. It's it called, a place is called Thrift and Dollar. Some things are pure one, some things are true vintage, some are true antiques. So it's always across the board. This one was $2 yellow and I actually paid $2. I, this yellow was not half price the day that I went. Um, I thought this was worth $2 because this will probably end up going into the vintage market because I have some of my cocktail uh, stuff from uh, a, a gift shop that closed that a friend was running. Um, I had a bunch of inventory that I sold in my live sale, but I was selling, there was so much of it, I didn't want to overwhelm my live sales. So there's some cocktail stuff that I put into my booth. This will go great with it. And again, I just see stuff like this as an impulse purchase. No one's going to look at the individual uh, uh, corks to you know, figure out, like, is it worth anything? It's gonna be like, well, what are they wor worth paying? I will say one of the quirks is Seven Deadly Zins, which has to be one of the best wine names I've ever heard. Uh, and I haven't heard it until I saw the cork. So Seven Deadly Zins as in Zinfidels. Um, anyway, I don't think there's any valuable quirks in here. It's really just, this is what it is. It can be hung, but it's also got the the uh, platforms on here that you can also set it because it is I think it is designed to be a trivet uh, hot plate or something um, because the corks are a raise above the edge of the wood so it would be a very safe surface to put a hot um, a hot casserole dish or whatever onto it so thought that was kind of a nice addition even paying full price two dollars was certainly well worth it and can you maybe turn around in my booth I could probably sell this for like eight you know, seven, eight, maybe even 10, you know, depending. Um, I thought it was a good buy. So that's my haul. Uh, longer than I'd anticipated, so I apologize for that. But uh, if you've been watching my videos before, that shouldn't be a surprise. I, I'm i a talker. Uh, but this also was, what, three, four different locations. So this was kind of multiple hauls brought into one. So it went a little bit longer. Hope you found it a little bit interesting. Uh, again, a lot of these are gonna go on my Etsy store. Some might go onto eBay. Some will go into my vintage uh, booth. 
If you see anything, it's gonna take me a while to get all of these listed because I've got so many other things already in process. Uh, these will probably be sitting in a box for a while. So once they, once this posts, if there's anything you're interested in, just let me know. I'll be happy to work something out with you. Uh, but uh, if you liked what you saw and you're still watching, if you're not a subscriber, I really would appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, throw a comment in there, just say hi, whatever the case may be. Uh, because I'm not up to a thousand subscribers yet, little things like that do actually make a difference. It, it helps YouTube recognize that I am a viable channel. I'm a real channel. I'm not a robot. I am putting out real content. And if people like it, it's more likely that they will then suggest it to other people who are interested in similar things that are, you know, interested in vintage. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Find me at TH Mercantile on Instagram, Facebook, and Etsy. And you've already found me on YouTube. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you for putting your trust in a trusty huckster. Bye-bye. Sure was nice to know you. Oh, maybe I'll catch you on the New York train. Oh, maybe I'll never see your face again.